Southern California, yeah. Born and raised our DNA, laugh and cry to what we say, we hit you with that wordplay. Four, zero, five, three. What episode are we on? D, they feeling like baby zombies, all dressed in Abercrombie. SoCal DNA coming in live, 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night. COVID got you sitting inside, why not sip one and free your mind? Cheap thrills, popping pills, stacking cash, spending fast. Listen to all of those lies as Arjun act like he's surprised. surprised. Man, I know I probably should have brought this up during our little meeting earlier, but uh, throughout that intro, man, I was like picking out my teeth and I got like little flakes of coconut, man. I, I, I eat like a coconut ice cream, which is delicious. Uh, Do you uh, like coconut ice cream? Are you you or- know, I, I got I, I to gotta tell you, man, I have a confession to make. I am not a fan of shredded coconut. Uh, you're one of those. You like coconut milk. But not I, I like coconut, coconut milk a lot, but not shredded. There's something weird about it to me. Like I know Whoa. a lot of people like it as a topping. They mix it with their froyo or their ice cream, but I just I just don't like the texture. I don't want to like Why chew not? on this a little little plasticky. It's, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like it's not fun for me. It yeah. doesn't do anything for me. You know, um, no, not even but, if it's like sugar coated or like slightly toasted. You know, where it's not white anymore. It's kind of like golden brown. <laughs> None of that? I, I suppose I, I suppose that's a minor upgrade, but I, I would probably do without entirely. Okay, you know, what about I, like just, uh, like dried coconut then? Have you ever had like the dried coconut snacks? Where they're like oh, like they're, they're kind of like coconut chips, right? Yeah, like yeah, kinda, yeah. You know, but they're I like have... meaty. Like, have you gotten the meaty ones where it's like oh, I don't you think gotta I've like got the meaty ones. It's like beef jerky, kind of texture. Oh wow, I I don't even know if I would Ooh. enjoy that. But um, I, I've just had the chip-like ones that are kind of crunchy, and those were okay. Those were fine. Oh, okay. Um, it, it just I think there's something about the shredded coconut, the texture of it, the plastic in nature, as you said, that just doesn't sit right with my palate. But to each his own. If I you like dig it. that. If you if you like having it all up in your grill, <laughs> that's totally cool. Yeah, it's just totally the only cool. thing I don't like it's fucking sticking to like weird crevices of my teeth, and now I'm all worried. Like, shit. Like, are these cavities they're getting stuck into? Like, I don't, I don't know what. Oh well, I'll worry about a different day. Different you know, day. maybe, maybe uh, I should get you some floss. I think floss might be. A good no, idea. it's like on the side of my tooth, not even like in the crep. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little concerning. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't, I don't well, know. You know, you know. I'm, I'm sure you'll figure it out. You're All a big boy. Right. Yeah, thanks, you know, man. You, you thanks. Can, uh, thanks for the concern. Probably... I felt it. Now, now we gotta go check. No, you... I think I think I think some Listerine might do you good. All some, you know, yeah, we'll make it hard work. rinsing. You know, we'll make it work. oh, um, you're like, I got oh, it. Yeah. got it. Like got a washing it. machine, got a washing it. machine in my mouth. That's right. That's right. And and you know, we were talking about things being up in your grill. Well, right now it looks like uh, nice. OKC's up in Harden's grill right now. So everybody, we're watching Game Seven mm-hmm. of the uh, first round still of the mm-hmm. Western Conference playoffs. We yeah, got OKC Thunder. Yep, and uh, the my internet is a, is a little stronger than his, so I think I'm uh, I'm ahead of him with his TV stream. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think what what are you on? You're on AT and T. What is that? Uh this is this might be Spectrum. Okay. This might be Spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I got to talk to the um, Spectrum guys, man. Setting it up at the new house. Well, well, the, the thing for me is. I think whatever stream I use, it's going to be a little bit behind your TV stream, right? Uh, well, I'm, I'm on just the Google Sheet. I'm not watching the game. Just watching the scores. Oh, oh. oh uh, I got you. I got you. Box. Um, I got you. So right now I'm on the, the 133 mark of the third quarter. So you're probably... Yeah, time, me too. Maybe like a minute. Oh, oh, are you really? Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Maybe they took a time out or something. 80-80. Um, yeah, 80-80. This is, this is, I got to say, like for those that haven't been keeping up, this has been a surprising series for multiple reasons. Um, number one, I, I don't think anybody thought that Chris Paul could take this series to seven yeah. games. Yeah. You know, and I, I was one of those people. I like Chris Paul. I, I enjoyed watching him play when he was on the Clippers. But on this OKC Thunder team, I thought it's a blessing for them to even make the playoffs, mm-hmm. right? Like, let alone win a game. Mm-hmm. But now. It looks like, you know, 80-82, they're down by two. They have a real shot of upsetting the Houston Rockets. Oh, yeah. And let me ask you this, Don. What does it say about Russell Westbrook? Well, before we get on to the Rockets roster, um, yeah. I was reading about this, and the Thunder had a point two chance to make playoffs at the beginning of the year. 0.2%. Right? Mm. Can you believe that? Like, everybody doubted him. 
And, you know, um, shame on me. I even doubted him. I thought it was just a throwaway and uh, the Rockets won that trade. Uh, but obviously right. not because they are struggling against this team that many thought were just a hodgepodge of characters that were not wanted. Um, mm. So it's that. And I think they they won because they have so many fucking draft picks, right? They got picks for days. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. Um, they're, they're set for, I think, a couple of years with all the first-round picks that they got. Heck yeah. But um, it, it's interesting to me because... I was listening to Chris Paul's post-game interview not too sure. long ago. State I think Farm. It might have been after yep. Yep. State Farm shout out after Game Six, and he basically said something to the effect of, "You know, we're a bunch of guys that have been traded, you know, journeymen, mm. went around from team to team, but we're all dogs out there. You yeah. know, Dennis Schroeder is a dog. You know, I'll go to war with him." And I really like that. You know, he took something that was kind of a a setback for him right sure. traded away from the rockets a contending team mm-hmm. to arguably one of the worst teams in the league at, at the, the time. time yep at the time um but he actually made the best of it yeah. you know chris paul being the true leader of men that he is uh clearly he read the ultimate art of war by anthony <laughs> you know so he he see so look right there hey by the way you said anthony not anthony this time I'm, I'm mixing it up. I was conscious of it, by the way. It, it was one of those things where, like, you know when you're kind of dyslexic? Uh, you, you switch between well, the two words. Why is your dyslexia the in the second... middle? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird how it works for me. But, um, yeah, no, I, I am incredibly impressed, and I continue to be impressed by the efforts of Chris Paul. Yeah, and, yeah. It speaks levels you know. as to how great of a leader he is. He may be an asshole uh, on the court might be a pain in the ass but when he's on your side you're gonna want that dog um oh yeah and absolutely compiling that dog nature with being uh, a ruthless floor general that's quite a mix that i don't think exists right now yeah I, i'm I trying mean, to think if there is anybody can you think of any other point guards that are like that i mean russell Westbrook is but he's a little bit different See, I, I, I hate to put Westbrook down because I know he's a former MVP. I know he's very, very talented. Mr. Triple Double. <laughs> when it comes to like assessing a point guard, to me, I care more about your um, ability to perform under pressure and your decision making. Mm-hmm. I, I really care about that. Mm-hmm. And for Westbrook, time and time again, we see him turn the ball over. We wait, see wait, him wait, wait. But before know, we move shots, on. air ball. You care about those things yet you are alonzo ball fan yes that is true it is the dichotomy (laughs) and and it's hard it's harder and harder to defend i'm not gonna lie Uh, you know the audience of this podcast has already heard me kind of go against alonzo a little bit just be frustrated with his bubble performance articles have shown that he's checked out so uh, you know it's not looking too good for him but maybe for his younger brother it might be a different story oh will be um you know, but now I, I just feel like even though Chris Paul's thirty five, you know, clearly past his prime, just the fact that he can go on pretty much any team and make them better, mm-hmm. it proves to me that he is still an elite point guard and still one of the best in the game. Yep. And I I actually think his leadership ability surpasses that of Westbrook. Mm. His leadership ability surpasses that of most guards in the NBA mm. because he just does everything he can on the court even if it's like flopping even if it's Mm -hmm. you know arguing with referees getting underneath the skin of players he finds a way to win games he wills his team to victory and it's hard not to root for the guy yeah yeah i mean it's it's easy to say that now because they're not up against our team um but just in general i think we could respect him as a player and kind of play the what if game you know if the trade actually happened where he did become a laker um instead of it being vetoed when he was a what was it he was a hornet still at that time right it wasn't the pelicans yet it was the hornets right correct he was still a hornet that's right so yeah you know i i that would have been sick i mean (laughs) just the thought of kobe and chris paul together yeah and, and just imagining how things may have gotten different, right? How yeah. things may have been different for them. 
But alas, you know, it just wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. Um, David Stern, rest in peace, he got in the way of that. Um, And to what end? I I guess the Clippers became relevant again, right? At the time, Um, They had Lob City going on. and and Which was fantastic to watch. I I agree. I mean, uh, like, around that time, I think we were both an undergrad, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a lot of fun because... Laker games were expensive. Mm-hmm. I mean, we would always try to go see Kobe, but never had Laker games were tough to go to. <laughs> yeah. um, ultimately, you you settle sometimes for Clipper games because they're so cheap, so so cheap. They've gotten mm-hmm. higher in price since of then. Course. I know, but um, back then, like you could literally go to the lower level for like 30, 35 bucks, sure. which is unheard of for Lakers. Mm-hmm. And imagine going to the lower level. Being able to see all the stars, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul, Eric Gordon, Jamal Crawford even for a stretch. It was just a really fun, fun team mm-hmm. that was kind of underperforming, I guess, right? In the playoffs for whatever reason, mm-hmm. probably due to injuries to their stars, they could never make it over the hump. Yeah, it was more of a, in the most respectful way, a, a nice circus show that you wanted to go to. It was definitely entertaining. You were definitely going to get at least one or a handful of highlights, I would say. Sure. Um, and you know, like you said, I think injuries just plague them. I never thought that with that style of basketball, they would be able to go deep in the finals or into the finals. Mm-hmm. Um, but they mm-hmm. would make a good run at things. And they kept things competitive while making it a show, which I think helped the Clippers build their name and credibility um, and credit goes to uh, Balmer dude Balmer was able to shell out shell out the money and look at where the Clippers are now so good for the org I wonder if it's the same GM um, even from past days like could you no, name I, the GM I, yeah actually surprisingly I can the older GM was a guy named Neil Oshley Okay. Um, who I think might have gone to the Blazers after his tenure with the Clippers. Oh, okay. I just remember him being a very good GM back in the day. Okay. Um, and, and you could quickly fact check me. I could be dead wrong on this one. Let me double but check. Uh, that, that's what I recall. And and of course, later on, um, Doc Rivers may have kind of assumed the position of GM. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. sure on that. He might he might have been like playing coach and GM at the same time. Mm. Um, but they also hired Jerry West. Mm. as you recall that's and right as a um consultant, consultant. <laughs> yeah 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 you know what that means yeah. Consultant. yeah um so you know i i feel like the clippers have made a lot of good moves both in the front office and in the player personnel to make them a championship oh. caliber team oshley now, was only the gm from 2010 to 2012 Oh, so wait, you, you, who was the GM from 2010 to 2012? Oshley? Oshley. And then it went okay, to okay. Vinny Del Negro. Oh, um, he was the coach too, right? I believe so. It's a shared duties with Andy Roser and Gary Sachs. Oh, uh, okay. Then okay. Andy Roser took it, and then they shared the duties with the same guys, right? All of them. And then Gary Sachs oh, took wow. it for a bit. Mm. So they kind of checked it out, and then they got Doc. Mm. Doc Rivers. Who then became the coach? Because he was GM from 2013 to 2017, I believe. Mm-hmm. And now they have this guy named Lawrence Frank as of 2017. Oh yeah, Lawrence Lawrence Frank wasn't he the coach of the uh, the New Jersey Nets? Sure, he was born in New Jersey. I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, uh, that's hey, and me. shout out to the Lawrence Frank man. It was his birthday ten days ago. Oh yeah, happy birthday, Lawrence Frank. You know, uh, the world is a better place with you as a Clippers executive for sure um yeah no I, I clippers have made tremendous moves and i think a lot of credit goes to adam silver too uh adam silver was the one that ousted donald sterling uh as people may recall he was the racist owner that got caught saying a lot of things and in, in private conversation that really no nba owner should be thinking mm. about let alone saying um so good riddance to him bomber is a far greater owner who's willing to invest quite frankly as Don will will easily agree with, in in pro sports, if you have an owner that's willing to spend money, that goes everywhere. That goes such a long way. And I think that's that really speaks the best way, in my opinion. I think it just Go speaks ahead. in general, man. If you have a leader 
that is willing to spend money. You can go much, much further, whether it be in business, whether it be in your family, whether it be in wherever. The sacrifice it takes to basically spend money to make money, spend money to make something great, um, is a hard idea to accept for some people uh, mm. because it's almost like a selfless sort of approach to things but at the end of the day if you're successful at it and you do it correctly it can be a selfish measure at the same time um so it's i i I count it as purely selfish it's really a long-term play it's a long-term play because you're really investing in future growth of your team right like you look at the knicks for instance the knicks led by james dolan they've been a you know a laughing stock of the nba for years um they're kind of notorious for not spending too much money and also messing up, mm-hmm. trading away Przingis, uh, getting back Dennis Smith Jr., who's not even that great. Um, they just made a lot of draft errors or even had bad luck throughout the years. And I look at that team and you realize they're one of the most profitable teams in the NBA, mm-hmm. right? Like their teams are trash every year. The actual product on the court pales in comparison to any playoff team sure right but they're still so lucrative because but they're in new york they have that market yeah and, and and i think a lot of owners realize that they don't necessarily need to spend too much to have a profitable nba team yeah the ones that do they're playing the longer game because they're thinking okay if we do invest a little bit more capital get more players maybe get more training facilities that are great um you know, reward the players more then maybe later on our franchise will be better because we'd be a playoff team. We'd be a contender. We'd get more games in the playoffs, more TV deals, and yeah, maybe yeah. a championship. And I know? think, I mean, what, what I was alluding to is you went to the counter example of Dolan, but I was leading to uh, Mark Cuban as the example because he mm-hmm. initially did it because he already had the money. He wanted to do it because he loved the sport, right? He just wanted sure. to be an owner. Like, if you and I had the money, we would fucking do it, even though we wouldn't know what we would be doing. We would just say, yeah, we're the fucking owners, and ha ha ha, nose up in the airs and shit. Wouldn't um, that be awesome? That it would, would be, be awesome. man. Hey, yeah, you know, <laughs> my mutual funds are growing slowly, so, uh, hey, you know, maybe in about it, two, yeah. two, three hundred years. Uh, we'll, I, we'll like work. <laughs> I like it. Who knows? <laughs> By the way, do you ever wonder if sports leagues will be around that in, in like, two hundred years? Definitely. Because you think so? You yeah. really think so? Yeah, because um, maybe not sports in today's terms, but depending on who you talk to, right? But esports yeah. will be around. Um, That's sad. That is really it's sad. It's not to me. sad. It's just the evolution of things, man. The old no, sport. Not. The old sport was fucking gladiator coliseum yeah. battles, man. People were dying. Yeah. You know? And here, now we have people, they're not dying, but they're still putting their physical body on the line. Right? Look at football. Look at rugby. Right. Stuff like that. So the next iteration is, okay, well, how do we make it sort of safer? Right? In the simplest form. Mm. It's not the not the end of all of it all. But I'm just saying that would be the next logical piece that would you have know, to I, I, evolve. I can I can take it into a slightly different direction, but following with you a little bit. Yes, say the next venture is to make all sports safer, right? Sure. To reduce injuries. Yeah. Well, eventually what will happen is, and it's already happening in football, you make the game so safe that it doesn't even resemble the game that of you course. used to love. Yep, yep, and that's and, why video and, games can sidestep that, because that game itself is bloody and gory and um, not dangerous, uh, but brutal. And it provides that, it, it gives us that animalistic urge, or it feeds that animalistic urge that comes with those sort of things. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I find it difficult to believe that video games will ever Dude, capture. You gotta, you gotta imagine, man. Just, just imagine well, no, in Civ, what, like Civ Ten. When Civ Ten comes out, no, those no, elephants, are you kidding? those are elephants you kidding? are not going to be coming at you and just poking you with their tusks. You're going to see <laughs> them stepping on you with that AR or VR headset that you're already going to have implanted in your brain, and you're going to feel okay. it. So that that's actually a good point. Um, I was thinking kind of more on the PC gaming, console gaming side. But uh-huh. if you take the conversation over yeah. to, uh, you know, virtual or yep. augmented reality, mm-hmm. then you can actually combine everything. It is yeah. the best of both worlds. Yeah. You're right. And, I mean, the physical aspects is still going to be there, but injuries will 
not diminish, or they will diminish, but they will not be eradicated, I think. Uh, but we may get to a point where they will be, and people will just get brain damage or some shit instead uh, for being Oof. connected too long or whatever. Um, Oof. Wow. But um, um, but you know, you get what I'm saying now? Kind of. No, like... I, 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 I do. I do. Um, I, I just think maybe I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to sport. I, mm -hmm. I feel like, yes, you can always implement technology. You can always have the most sophisticated AI uh, and neural networks and machine learning models to have these video games work out. But ultimately, there's something pure and, and almost beautiful about like physical, just pure physical sport where sure. it's all about the athletic ability, all about the you know IQ of the players I... on the floor or on the field. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you open that up to technology and you let that kind of dominate, especially with Neuralink, I know you mentioned that, the embedded chips inside the mm -hmm. head. I, don't you think that taints the game? It does. It does, from our perspective, because we've grown up with what we have today. But think about mm -hmm. the kids of today. They are more in tune with Fortnite more often than not. That mm -hmm. is their, com their, their competition. Mm -hmm. For us, it was, hey, our parents uh, are making dinner or doing some other shit. We got to go entertain ourselves, go to the neighbor's house and play mm -hmm. or something like that. For kids, mm -hmm. they don't have to do that anymore. They sit in their AC uh, blasting home, which I didn't have, <laughs> right? And they sit yeah, back yeah. with a fucking cup of Coke or milk or some sort of Kool-Aid. I don't even know if they make Kool-Aid anymore for kids, right? Like, they used to come they, in those they... packages or, like, Capri Suns and shit like that. Or I don't know if you remember those uh, those twist-off Kool-Aids that come in, like, those thick, soft plastic squeeze bottles. You I love those. Those yeah. tasted better. Those tasted better for me. Yeah. <laughs> right? I like, yeah, I don't yeah. think they have that stuff anymore. But even if they do... They're just sitting at home and they don't have to go out and play and be physical. It's as simple mm -hmm. as jumping on the internet, which is, uh, at least in the developed world, commonplace. Um, mm -hmm. And jump on the game with their friends. And these games are free. There's yeah, no, no paywall. I, I, I understand. You know? I understand. Your, your, your overall point is the access to games sure. and connectivity yeah. and multiplayer anything is is a lot better now than it used to be yeah. i agree i agree but you know you made several points there you talked about kool-aid and not knowing whether or not yeah, now, now i'm missing around. it man i, I kind of want to ebay it or something i know but part of it is also like the whole focus on health right i think um a as a as a global citizen as, as, a, as a citizen of the world everyone's trying to do like the latest and greatest with nutrition they're, they're learning more about you know different things like childhood obesity and i think a lot of lobbyists have pushed for this right they've been pushing for uh reducing caloric and, and, and sugar intake especially for adolescents for kids i'd say it's the um, opposite so you, you say it's the opposite yeah. when it comes to lobbyists these companies are pushing for their products to be sold and sugar is still being implemented and used just in different forms i guess i i, I know what you mean i was using lobbyists in the more general sense like they're lobbying against this got like it got it there's more action or so or yeah, more yeah, yeah, uh yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i get what you're saying i just you know i gotta call you out every now and then there's not many times where i'm sober when we're talking so you know i don't have the dyslexia kicking in like you do right now so i gotta I, take advantage know, of it i know I, I'm a uh, self-diagnosed semi-dyslexic, selectively semi-dyslexic person. It's all good, it's, man. We'll uh, find the we'll find the right components to put into your brain, and uh, get it working. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, one day we'll finally find the missing piece that's been uh, <laughs> puzzling me all this time. But you know, I, I I will say a lot of things have been happening sure. in the world as of late, um, and I know we don't have a whole lot of time today, but I do want to touch on one of them at least. Sure. Um, so this might have been about a couple years back uh, a superhero movie came out called Black Panther mm. and Black Panther was about uh, this um, fictional country of Wakanda where uh, fictional. vibranium oh okay well for, for some of us it was still real right? <laughs> clearly to this day it's still real uh, 
<laughs> okay, so let's say the real country of Wakanda in Africa. Uh, it, basically, you you hear about this superhero that came from a long lineage of these, you know, uh, African American not African American, sorry, African uh, uh, kings, and the least of which is King T'Challa, played by Chadwick Boseman. And so Chadwick Boseman, as many people know, famous for many roles. Uh, over the past four or five years, he's done uh, the James Brown uh, biopic. He's done uh, Jackie Robinson. Um, and, and he's played other roles as well at, at a very high caliber level. Um, and we all thought that he was pretty much an A-list celebrity, rising star, if not already risen. And his career was just beginning, so to speak. He would be like the next Will Smith, the next Denzel. Mm. And then just the other week, um, the world is shocked to find out that uh, Chadwick Boseman has passed away um, at the tender age of, I believe, 43. And not only that, but the reason for his death, he had been privately suffering from, I think it's... Uh, colon cancer right Tom? yeah yeah and that's what gets me because i had no idea about it um yeah. and there were multiple yeah. iterations across the industry saying yeah we all knew and this fucker filmed the black panther while mm. dealing with this and coping with it and it, it, it he had a uh, just through his acting you could tell he he had a very calm demeanor to him it was perfect for his that role, and now I don't know if Black Panther was Bozeman or Bozeman was Black Panther. You mm. get what I'm saying, mm. right? Yeah. Like I, I, I wonder because I know, and you and I both know they'll eventually do a Black Panther too. I can't see it happening. It, it, it's gonna be. The original Black Panther is always going to be the best now. You know, when the future iterations come. Right? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I was thinking about that the other day, too, because now with Captain America, you know, officially exiting the franchise, um, you kind of need a new leader to step up. And sure, from what I heard... Um, the what's his face captain falcon the or uh the, the one that anthony mackie plays yeah, yeah, yeah. i forget his name falcon but he got yeah. the shield so he's now the leader <coughs> um, Haw hawkeye no hawkeye is some other guy uh, I, i'm sorry i'm really bad with these superhero names yeah, yeah. but it, it's part of the queue it's part of the queue everybody he'll get to it in about uh three years three years See, the sad part, Don, is that I've already seen all these films. Mm. I've seen Avengers 1 and 2. I've, I've, I'm caught up, basically. Mm. But even then, I, I can't recall all these names. It's just too many. Um, but in any case, I kind of thought, you know, Black Panther would take the mantle from Captain America. Maybe not becoming Captain America, per se, but just being the overall leader mm. of the new band of uh, Avengers. Mm. But now I just don't know what direction they take it, because it is a very delicate thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I look back at Fast and the Furious, right, and, and I look at how they handled Paul Walker's death, mm -hmm. and you know it, it was interesting, right? I think he shot some scenes already for that that final film that he was in, but it wasn't finished, mm -hmm. and so they had to like do some CGI and get Paul Walker's uh -huh. brothers involved to make it all like one, you know, total package, right, to kind of seamlessly tie it all together. And I don't know if they'll go that far with Black Panther 2 because it probably hasn't even started shooting yet. Maybe the respectable thing to do would be to kind of gracefully kill him, kill T'Challa in Black Panther. And if you remember, they, they show some kids in Oakland, right? Like maybe one of those kids in Oakland becomes the next Black Panther. What do you think about that? Good. It could. It it will help the story out. Um, but you know, just like with our Black Mamba, there's no one that could really replace that role. That's already been, you know, led and ushered by someone that's now passed away. It becomes enshrined because of that. 
So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it, Marvel and Disney are still going to produce a fantastic film, regardless of the actors and the actresses uh, they cast. But this just adds a ripple in the uh, IRL portion of it all. And because of that, we make the connection um, more seamlessly than we would if otherwise done. So, I don't know. I think they they got to lay it off anyways. It's not part of the uh, current timeline that I think uh, Marvel and Disney want to put out. There's other movies that are coming out prior to it. Um, so they have their time to figure out what they want to do moving forward, I think. It'll be interesting. I'm also in no rush to uh, watch Black Panther 2 or, or any Marvel movie for that matter because clearly my queue goes on for days. I have mm-hmm. so many other things to watch, but it, it's it was a sad story. Um, I, I, I'll admit, though, because I've been probably a few years removed from watching Black Panther, um, the news... It, it, it was shocking. I, I remember my friend texted me uh, last Friday. Mm-hmm. And I was shocked by it, but it didn't hit me the same way that the Kobe Bryant news hit me. You know? Like, um, a- and I think it's those types of moments where you realize, even though these are all, you know, celebrities and you're far removed from them, the fact that the death of a celebrity can impact you in that way it makes you realize how much you really from afar cared about them and made them part of your life in some way either as motivation as an idol or just as entertainment and it dawned on me there that yes you know it is tragic everything that's happening in 2020 but kobe bryant's death was was probably the biggest thing for me you know and, and it happened at the start you know before COVID and everything hit um I think enough time has passed where I can freely talk about it, but there was some time when I wouldn't even want to watch his highlights because it would make me sad. I didn't want to watch the Staples Center conference where Shaq and Jordan and everybody came through and talked about Kobe's life. I didn't want to get all emotional with that, but now that enough time has passed, I can kind of accept it for what it is. So I guess I've moved on my grieving process for Kobe. and just r.i.p for both of those legends kobe bryant in the game of basketball and rap um chadwick boseman for his acting great people um you know in their discipline and outside their lanes so certainly yeah and you know uh, not to take away from uh, boseman but to me man that that was more impactful than kobe because out of all the marvel movies i related to black panther the most reason being is there is this couple the scene and i'm not sure if you remember the scene where he's basically becoming black panther for the first time mm-hmm. um so he'll essentially become king but there's this quote from the father where he sees his father right in like the dream realm or whatever or mm-hmm. um you know in that space time whatever yeah that our plane yeah, yeah. yeah where he's like uh, Black Panther or T'Chaka. No, sorry. T- What's his real name? T'Challa. T'Challa. Uh, T'Challa. 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 Uh, asks his dad, like, hey, I'm not ready. And then the dad's like, hey, have you not been prepared to be king your whole life? Have you not trained and studied and been by my side? Like, have I taught you nothing? Right? As someone whose father has passed at that time, where it was kind of relatively fresh still, it was like, whoa. Like, you'll get to that point where, you know, hopefully way later in your life where you're going to reflect on these sort of things and be like, oh, shit, I should have learned so much more. I should have done this. Da, 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 da. When they said that, I was like, ooh, why am I bitching? Everything's already been done. You know, like I pulled out my Jocko card and was like, good, let's move forward. So, I don't yeah. know. No, that, that that that's actually really, really cool of you to share. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think, yeah, man, and I, dude. I, yeah. Oh, and I gotta say also, this happened my first time. It was the first time we went to Taiwan. Yeah. 
right? When we watched it? I watched the damn premiere of Black Panther uh, in Taiwan. So it wasn't even wow. in, like, here, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, it was an interesting feeling, you know, being the first one to kind of travel internationally and, mm. you know, do all those things and see things that no one has seen, at least from, you know, my gene's eyes. Sure. So... Oh, Chadwick Boseman. No, no Black Panther will beat him in my eyes. Yeah, and and for everybody in the world, he is the only Black Panther today. It's mm-hmm. not like Spider Man, where there's Tobey Maguire, Andy Garfield, and you know other guy. It's, yeah, the other guy, the new kid. <laughs> the new kid. Um, and you know, I I hope it doesn't become that. I I really don't like it when they constantly rehash a particular superhero. You yeah, know, whether it's uh, Batman or Spider Man or Superman, it, it it always kind of ruins it for me. You know, um, Marvel probably one of the reasons why Marvel has been so successful is continuity, and it's something that goes very unappreciated. Um, they've had Tony Stark for like what a decade. Mm-hmm. They've had Chris Evans for Captain America for like a decade, a- and same goes for you know uh, Scar. Uh, what's what's her face? Uh, Go ahead, you Scarlett it. Johansson's yeah. character. Uh, I, for, I forget all the names, but Black Widow, Black Widow. Like all these characters have been around. Thor as well, you know. And uh, you, you know, dude, other... but huh? the thing is, the one yeah. character that I'm looking forward to that's being recasted, it's actually in DC, but it's going to be Batman. It's going to be Robert Patterson. Uh, no, man. Uh, did you see that trailer though? Oh, I did. I did it. Oh, didn't. okay. After this, we're gonna watch it together, cause, cause that is amazing. All right, we we will watch it together. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, for that. it's great. It's great. It's just, um, I I think I was just repulsed by the fact that uh, another Batman casting has happened. Like I thought Ben Affleck was supposed to be the guy. Yeah, they probably just he, they couldn't pay him enough. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, and and to be honest, like. I, I haven't seen all the Batmans ever, but I have seen uh, George Clooney as Batman, and I always thought that he was interesting. I, I didn't see all of his films, but he had the swag for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole billionaire mm-hmm. playboy type of aspect mm-hmm. of it. He covered that part for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on, on the other end, like later on, the Dark Knight trilogy with Christian Bale, mm-hmm. that was nice. I thought that Bale was Bale was freaking great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I really appreciated um, that Batman, you know, that mm-hmm. saga of Batman. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, respect, respect. And, and, and But here's also the thing, though. Like, I understand actors get old and you can't play the same role forever. But I, I think part of the problem with DC is that they rely too much on just Batman and Superman. Um, that's why it was a very welcome addition. Now, granted... My, my interest to full disclosure I have not seen any of the Wonder Woman films mm. or Aquaman or any of these other films but mm. I, I just think in general it's a great sign that they're investing in Wonder Woman and I think the reviews have been good um, it's a great sign that they're investing in Aquaman because Jason Momoa he he is very well liked by many people Steve, Steven Adams yeah he's, he's actually busy right now they can't film because he's, he's playing busy and, uh, yeah. you know we, we should uh, since there is on my clock at least about a minute 21 left um, I I'm, think at, we I'm at probably... 50 seconds 50 seconds 50, dude okay. this is gonna like given that it's playoffs this is gonna take another 10 minutes at least it might it might <laughs> but, but, but one request like don't don't spoil it for me because oh I, I will I will. I, uh, I, that's that's where I find the greatest joy. <laughs> <laughs> that's joy for you. That's exactly. just like annoyance. Exactly. Just pure, pure See, I'm gonna be. Me. I'm gonna be the selfish one now when it comes to what were we talking about with selfishness? Instead of putting in the money, I'm. I'm gonna be gaining money or losing money. Who knows? But I'm gonna take it selfishly. Who knows that's what that. you're doing? Man. I don't even know what you're doing with those mutual <laughs> funds you keep showing me every day. You buy, uh, who buys mutual funds hey, every man. day? Hey like man, I'm day. a I'm a government worker now. I'm playing conservative. I like it. I like it. Just like your uh, official party, right? Huh? Hey man. Uh, hey, you know preference? what? Hey, I I am. I am. I, I will say it. Yeah, I am conservative. Wait, are you? Are you I I actually am. Yeah, I'm well. I'm listed. Yeah. Wait, what does that mean? You're listed as conservative. Um, uh, when you what do you call it? Register to vote. 
Wait, so when you say okay, so when you say conservative, are you are you saying? Uh, oh, I'm not going to say anything about the color. I'm just saying I, I I tend to have more conservative policies in my choices. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, interesting. Well, you know. <laughs> hey, man, I work in finance. It's it's a different mentality. I I, I know. I understand, and and you do a very good job in finance. So l- <laughs> let's. Well, you know, uh, humility is also one of your fortes, so you're being humble right now. But I, I, I hear you, man. I think um, over time, we all take these political journeys. Um, I, I tell people all the time, in, in America at least, in, in the bubbles that we are in the coast, like in the West Coast especially, I think you tend to grow up thinking, you know, the other side is evil, right? Mm-hmm. Democrats are always right. They're the heroes. They're the good guys. And you grew up thinking the Republicans are evil. But when you start talking to more people, when you start meeting people from around the world, around the states, and you kind of see their side of the coin, you realize why there's so much contention, why there's all these differences of opinion. Hey, man, and it, the, yeah. the one thing I got to say is when you talk to people that are very, very successful, mm-hmm. they tend to be a certain party that you would not think they would be a part of. Uh, uh, where are you going with this? I, <laughs> I can actually see the answer both ways. I, well, I can see, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. What is Kanye, <laughs> by the way? Is Kanye birthday party officially? Kanye's birthday party. <laughs> he stays lit. He's always lit, man. He's, he's on the birthday party. Oh, hey, you know, man. I I I'll tell you this much. I never thought I'd say this, but mm-hmm. I've I've almost grown a little sick of Kanye. You know? Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, your dyslexia like is kicking in at high levels, <laughs> unprecedented levels. Hold on, let's let's make sure the ordering of your words is correct here. Yeah, you... I, 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 I'm almost sick of Kanye. I, hmm. I can really say that. Um, it, it's like part of the reason is I wish he would just release a damn album instead of just teasing us about it all the time. Hmm. Um, oh my God, this this game, by the way. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Oh, man, that happened quickly. So yeah. it, it, it looks like OKC has lost the game and Houston will advance. But Harden actually blocked the Dork guy? Wow. Oh, yeah, I know you're not watching, but uh, Harden is super amped up right now because he had the game ceiling block. There we go, man. About time. What is that? His first block of his career? Um, first, first, probably first defensive know, play, pivotal, pivotal block. Oh, for sure. oh, okay. Uh-huh. But um, the the interesting thing about it is, if you recall, when Harden was up against the San Antonio Spurs several years ago, um, he was blocked by Manu Ginobili, and that mm. kind of sealed the deal for him. Mm-hmm. So I think for for Harden today, I don't know if he was thinking about that moment, but it's extra special to be able to potentially close this series with a defensive play defense which is something that is <laughs> well that everybody talks shit party. about for just the houston rockets in general yeah yeah but so let me see what happened here okay so westbrook actually tipped the ball and then it was a good recovery by shy so now really the debate is did it touch harden in any way why, why did he... Oh, I don't know. Okay, so they're showing this replay. Oh, are they challenging it? Uh, or? Yeah, I think so. Like, Dort uh, threw the ball, and it looked like he threw it in between Harden's legs. It might have touched his jersey shorts, but he but just not threw the, body the ball itself. through the legs. And um, it is technically Houston ball right now. Oh. I think that's the official ruling on the court. And now they have Steve Jabby. I'm not listening. I'm just kind of imagining sure. what you're saying. Yeah, I see one second on the clock. Okay, they, they added more time, it looks like. 1.6 seconds. So this looks like it's probably Houston ball. But let, let me let me see what happened here. Alright, so while Arjun is doing that, yeah. I think it's time that we should uh, bring out the Art of War here. And from Let's what I recall, so, we yes. are on... What are we on? Lesson lesson three? We are Lesson on, four. We are we are moving on up, my friend. Ooh. We are on heaven, lesson four. Oh, moving on up. I like that. Feel me. And so this is of course 
the second of the five constant factors. And in The Art of War, Sun Tzu uses the ideogram for heaven to refer to climate and weather. In other contexts, it can mean divine order. A good knowledge of weather forecasting and an understanding of the effect weather has on terrain and troops is essential. Soldiers who are too hot, too wet, or too cold underperform. Too much heat can mean a lack of water. Too much rain can mean being bogged down in muddy terrain, and a frozen landscape can render equipment useless. When entering enemy territory, a good military leader must understand the prevailing weather patterns and equip accordingly. Mm. Heaven can also mean yin and yang. Huh? How about mm, that? Mm, we'll, we'll, mm. Probably, we'll probably have some to say about that next week. Yeah. Considered to be dark and light in this context, hot and cold, changing of the seasons. And a war tip for all of you Sun Tzu aficionados. Always be aware of the weather conditions in the area where you will be going to war and learn to predict the weather as accurately as possible. And I'm going to tell you a story right now. Even though right now the weather seems pretty good, right? Where you are in, in I imagine, Pico Rivera at the moment. Um, I think, and probably, <laughs> you know, uh, where I am at in, in Santa Ana right now. The weather's great. It's like in the high 70s, probably. Nice. Pretty cool. But did you know? that in just a matter of days, probably by Friday, the weather will be scorching hot again and a heat wave will pretty much envelop the entire Southern California. Um, and you gotta be prepared. So how does one be prepared? Well, for some people, you make sure that, uh, you know, you got your fans ready, you got your uh, windows open and your doors open, not at nighttime probably, you don't want to leave the door open at night, but, but during the day, get some cross ventilation going, drink plenty of water, stay hydrated, because the last thing you want is to not have enough water in the heat, as Sun Tzu likes to say. Um, and of course, as we watch the final possession of this game... Was that like a half freestyle right there? <laughs> like while trying to watch the game? <laughs> yeah, it absolutely was. It absolutely was. So I somehow they added even more time to the clock. It's at two seconds now. I don't know how that happened. Um, Houston Ball or like, Thunderball? It looks like it's still Houston Ball. I don't know if they're if it just went out of bounds or what. But Westbrook I think is now is, taking the ball out. This is the bad part about this whole review process because now this is going to be talked about. Let's yeah pros okay, and cons. So, pros and cons pros and cons i know covington got the ball 1.4 seconds left he got fouled got uh it. okc still has two timeouts so it's not over yep so timeout over. well yeah i would assume they would want covington to make them both um because i'm assuming they're over the limit <laughs> i just saw your venmo comment <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait, did you did you send that too quickly? I imagine Maybe no, too no, because look at the score. There's no way they could get it, or there is a way, but the likelihood or the percentage chance is so low. I see what you mean. I see yeah. what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm just really happy we did the spread and not just yeah, yeah, yeah. no, because that saved it's, me. It's fair. <laughs> that it's really fair. saved me. It's fair. How, how how does it feel losing three consecutive bets to me? It's bad, dude. I would have lost four <laughs> if I accepted the the Bucks one because I was gonna pick the I, Bucks, dude. I, I was gonna give you the Bucks too. Oh my god! So Covington actually missed the second free throw. Yeah. So now it's 104, 102. Yeah. OKC ball. They're down two with 1.2 seconds left. Now, Which is enough to get a shot off. If, if Derek like, Fisher it, yeah. can do it, who, well, who can Derek do Fisher it? Well, Derek Fisher did it in point four, so which I get. That's what I'm saying. It's plenty, plenty. But I'm, oh, who's gonna get it? Um, give it to Chris Paul. You gotta give it to Chris Paul, or I Shy. Think, no, I, I think uh, I think Gallinari, if you can. Gallinari, or or that one dude that's been taking all the shots. Dort, Dort. <laughs> <laughs> what you know is what's name, by the way? No, yeah, what's yeah. great is if he fucking makes it. The stock value is going to go so high for him, and OKC is going to trade him off for more pieces, man. It's going to be great. Oh, my God. That'd be wild. That would be wild for sure. Um, yeah, I, I... Man, I... Well, I, yeah, I so to, either yeah. way, the bet is lost on my end. Sure, um, we, we can say that. We can yeah. say that. But the game um, is still up in the air. No, Unless no. it goes into yes. overtime. That is a strong possibility. If it does, then we'll probably call it, the podcast. We'll, we'll end yeah. the podcast before over time. Hey, is the, is the, the um, are the Rockets over there? What's the right word? I say limit. I don't think it's it. 
Uh, they have zero fouls to give. And there we they go. Have no timeouts. There we go. So, so they're over the limit. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. I'm I'm watching now. No no spoilers, please. Uh, the referee is going to give the ball to Shy. Shy. S C A. Number Got two. It. Okay. Uh, please bear Schroeder. with us. Please bear with us. Please bear with us. We got Schroeder in the back court. Got it. Uh, is Adams Chris, in? Adams is in. Probably setting a screen. Got it. For the two. Got it. No, they're trying to give it to Gallinari. Oh, they're gonna take a timeout. They're taking another timeout. Ah, uh, I say we just end it there, man. So that way we can just talk about it after, and we don't have listeners getting pissed off at us at the end. I know this is very unprofessional. <laughs> I apologize, Mister. So to, to recap a little bit, though, <laughs> are we gonna rush through heaven. this unprofessionally? Yeah, heaven was the, the lesson, <laughs> lesson number four, and it's not just about divine power; it is also about the weather. And we just made it a point that hey, you guys better stay dehydrated, not dehydrated, stay hydrated for this weekend. Absolutely, it, watch out for the thunder. Possible. Watch exactly. Watch for thunder. So there you have it. And from DNA, you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care. <laughs>